For 50 years, my grandfather checked the weather. He had a water meter in his backyard and a thermometer and a few other tools that measured certain quantities of air pressure and precipitation and, and the like. And he started in the 60s, put up these little scientific objects in his backyard and started recording numbers every day, every single day. He'd wake up in the morning and he'd go out to his backyard and write the numbers down. And then he'd go back inside and call up the the weather service, the, the New York State Weather Service, and let them know the numbers he recorded. This was before the internet. <laughs> Nowadays you can just put those devices in your backyard and plug in an ethernet cable and uh, the data would be sent right to them. I have no need for people like my grandfather anymore. But in the 60s it was needed. And there were monitors all over the state of New York that would wake up every morning and see how much rain fell and check what the temperature was like. My grandfather did this for 50 years, and there is a certain kind of dedication to process and dedication to watching the natural rhythms of the world as they progress, a dedication to do the same thing day after day after day, no matter what the weather was, <laughs> or what crisis was going on in his life, death of a spouse, divorce, whatever was going on, he made sure to check the weather. I think there's an understanding about the way that time works that can only be understood after repeating the same rhythm for a long, long, long time. I think that time is very long and we have all of these systematic biases because of our bodies and because of our cultures to think about time in these very short, discrete units. But time is actually incredibly, immeasurably long. And it's only through practices like this where we repeat slowly and methodically we repeat that we can begin to understand the enormity of time or at least that have allowed me to begin to understand the enormity of time and I don't understand it one bit but I think my grandfather might I think that getting up every day and checking the weather and watching weather change and watching the climate change. He wrote books about climate change in the Hudson Valley because he documented it. And watching that process over 50 years and seeing how time shapes a landscape and watching trees grow, I think that if I were to do those things, I would understand time a lot better than I do now. So that's why I'm doing this. Recording these words day after day after day. And it doesn't mean much now. <laughs> I mean, it means lots of things, right? Can talk about symbolism all day long, but at some level it doesn't mean much. It's just syllables. But I think that somehow, by saying those same syllables every single day, if I did it for 50 years, then maybe I would actually understand what time is, and what the infinite is. And if I could do that, then 
that would probably be a life well lived.